Gravy. This side, Rahul Magan here. Today, I am going to be discussing a very technical topic. And this technical topic is so wider and broad that we need to see this on case to case basis. So basically, you know, what do you mean by case to case basis is that you cannot generalize this topic. So you have to see this on case to case basis. Ladies and gentlemen, often we heard that so and so company in so and so country with so and so business model is raising money in the form of a debt, probably convertibles or any other form. And they created a syndication and this syndication is led by so and so bank and the total bank in this syndication say 50 for the sake of simplicity. And often we also heard that so and so company in so and so country and so and so uh, business model is getting a financing facility, financing facility worth $300 million. Just an example. Now, majority of the people tend to believe that, in fact, in my early days in 2007, when I entered the world of banking and finance, even I used to believe that both are same. And it is a matter of choice that which word we are going to be using. But over the period as my interest in the investment banking started to develop effective 2008 onwards, I started learning about investment banking, started reading international magazines, subscribed international magazine, visited the various websites of the globe who are offering information in public. I understood that the world of investment banking is pretty wide. And I'm very pleased that in the last 15 odd years, the world of investment banking, the horizon, the new products, the new developments has grown over the period of the time. In fact, many fold. And it is keeping me on toes to understand that what else is going in the world of investment banking. Now, when we speak about a syndication, although, although, let me be put an indemnification or a caveat, is that I'm not here to give you the complete detailed analysis of the difference between syndication and consortium. Because like I said very early in the video, the difference between syndicate and consortium varies from case to case. In fact, without quoting any specific name, it varies from country to country also. Because my interest in finance is very wide. And God is very kind that now being into the law, I'm reading the competition laws of many countries, which includes the glo global financial centers also. And when I'm reading the competition law, I am making out that how so and so global financial center describe the hostile takeover versus the normal takeover and so on and so forth. And then I am linking these, you know, uh, uh, concepts with the so and so. So let me tell you one thing that syndication is generally used that when any borrower wanted to raise a huge amount of money and although in the books it is written that a single lender is unable to support but honestly speaking i tend to disagree with this to a to a maximum extent so disagreement is of two types one is the minimum extent and one is the maximum extent and here very respectfully i am disagreeing with the maximum extent because i believe that in this world, we have the lenders, so and so, who are able to even fund billions of dollars. But what I strongly agree in this definition is that considering the geopolitical, considering the huge volatility in the financial market and exorbitant increase in commodities and many other factors, it is very hard for a single lender named so and so 
to lend the whole money from his pocket and then collate the risk in the form of credit valuation adjustment. Of course, of course, we would be speaking about credit valuation adjustment. We already had a word about this topic, but we would be covering this once more at an appropriate point of time. On the contrary, when it comes to consortium, consortium is binded by a legal contract. And when I am using a word contract, then I am entering into the world of law. Although when it comes to syndication, it is also binded, binded up from the various type of contracts like the contracts of underwriting and so on so forth. But having said that, when it comes to consortium, it is binded by a legal contract. And here the world of financial market is divided into two factions and possibly speaking I am into the first faction although I have a great regard to the second faction also. The first faction believe that the consortium job is to collate the money like when we do the printouts we collate the papers so that there is no paper to miss out there is no wrong numbering this is collation. The job of the consortium is to collate the money Put this in one pool, say XYZ, and put this money to a borrower. I am a believer of that. I believe that this is the role of the consortium. But having said that, let me let me make myself very clear that when I'm using that, the pool and also the usage of the money is not defined from my son. Because like I said, I am unable to explain everything in this video, else this video would be of two hours. And on the contrary, when it comes to the other faction, the other faction believes that there is a very thin line difference between consortium and syndication. Because they believe that syndication is possibly for, syndication is more often than not, is for the merchant banking or the investment banking operation on the contrary on the contrary consortium is for the corporate finance of course i spent around 10 years in corporate in in the treasury function in the front office and i and, and, I, and I completely agree that there is a wide difference between merchant banking investment banking and corporate finance in fact we already uploaded a video on our YouTube channel and more videos would be coming about the leveraged finance transaction which many people believe is a part of corporate finance but I strongly believe that the leveraged finance transaction is not a part of corporate finance. So this is the second faction which believes that consortium is only for the banking needs on the contrary the syndication is for the investment banking. Well, theoretically speaking, I am agreement in that, but practically speaking, I am sorry, I am not in agreement with that, but with high regards. But yes, like I said, the financial markets are changing. New instruments are coming. So God knows at any given point of time, the thin line between syndication and consortium even wipe out. Now, coming to the second part of the video, which is when so-and-so company who is working in so-and-so country with so-and-so business model is getting a facility letter from a consortium. Now that facility letter is actually based upon two things. On the first, I spoke a lot. In, in fact, in my friend circle also, I spoke a lot, but that is quite unfortunate that there is a very limited understanding about this topic. And trust, when I was working in the treasury function, and when I used to, uh, I would say, speak with the banks in terms of funding and all, then I understood the importance of that. But with high regards, with high regards, even then, even then, I used to feel that the complete justice is not done with the topic. Now, let me come to it. Now, first is called continuous monitoring activity, which is called CMA. I 
am a strong believer of the fact that if so and so company is raising whatever money from XYZ bank who based out whatever country, that bank needs to understand how this company looks like five years down the line. Now, please note that the five-year word I am using is not hard and fast. I am assuming that this company named XYZ is using the money for five years. Generally, loans are taken for 10 years, 15 years and higher than that. But in this eventuality, it is advisable to keep uh, continuous monitoring activity for a shorter period of time and then roll it over. Now, every company of the globe, it can predominantly be divided into two parts. Either this company is listed or this company is not listed, which means the company is either public or company is private. This is completely up to the management. They wanted to go public or they wanted to go private. There is nothing wrong in that in my eyes. But be a public company or be a private company, you are supposed to audit your financial stream. But of course, when it comes to a public company, when you audit your financial statement, there are more compliances that comes on your shoulders as compared to a private company. Because private company is not legally binded to share the information about its financials in public, upload in the financial newspapers and so on and so forth. Of course, there are few paid sites across the globe who give that information. But having said that, a public company is legally bounded to produce the results so and so quarterly, maybe six months, maybe yearly in the public domain. And it is very easy to go to the websites and download the annual report. But it is easy to download the annual report, but it's difficult to read the annual reports. Both are different. Now, suppose I am a company name XYZ and I wanted to raise 10,000 crores. Now, that 10,000 crores or uh, say one and a half billion dollars, let's take in dollar terms. Now, that funding which I need, a bank wanted to see that whether this, the company, say me, XYZ, this company is able to refund that money along with the interest, whether we would be able to secure our funding or not. Of course, you can have a collateral from me, but the point is many a times that collateral is not possible. And many a times there is a probability that the valuation of the collateral will fall down. Example, uh, you know, I would say loan to value ratio. I am getting a loan of one and a half billion. The collateral which I'm putting is of 1.3 billion. On the contrary, what would if due to any change in financial market, geopolitical issue or XYZ factor, this 1.3 trillion will went down to 500 billion. Then it would be a serious mess to loan to value ratio. In this eventuality, in this eventuality, a bank wish to understand how a company looks like five years down the line. 10 years down the line, 15 years down the line, of course, it is extremely hard, extremely hard for anybody to say what would happen 10 years down the line. In fact, now it is harder to even say what would happen one year down the line, forget 10 years down the line. But in a safer side, what the banks do, banks generally ask for CMA, continuous monitoring activity. Now, the point is that Sometimes continuous monitoring activities are bound down. Now, bound down is a legal word. Bound down by a stringent formulas. Now, that stringent formulas, because I myself handled this situation, it is so stringent that you even cannot amend this formula. Even to amend this formula, you need an approval. And approval from whom? Not your management, from the lender. Which means you are bound down to convince the lender management, the top level person, and which is very hard, time consuming, email, here, there, email, and so on and so forth. Sometimes the CMA is not so bound down, not so stringent, but their purpose is to get the KRA. 
विच इज द की एक्टिविटीज विच इज हैपनिंग इन दैट सो एंड सो कंट्री बट हैविंग सेट दैट वन कॉमन पर्पज विच कंटिन्यूस मॉनिटरिंग एक्टिविटीज सर्व इज दे विल टेल यू अ प्रो फॉर्म ऑफ फाइनेंशियल of the company now please note that when i'm using a word pro forma financial then i mean to say the balance sheet the profit and loss and the cash flow statement of course there are many countries in the world who more or less believe that cash flow statement is of no use but i still believe that cash flow statement is very effective in nature especially when the fancy terms are coming up into the picture which is adjusted ebitda adjusted pad adjusted eps and till now i fail to understand the formula of all the three and god is very kind my understanding in accounting and finance is very good but the formula of all three i fail to understand that what is an exact formula of adjusted ebitda adjusted pad and adjusted eps i am still sir sachi with a hope that a day would come i would get a formula of that with a hope now now a very important thing which i wish to understand and which i wish to let you know is that when it comes to financial market this credit this continuous monitoring activity job to raise the funding is getting more and more and more and more important but a very important thing is continuous monitoring activity is quantitative in nature you heard me very right it is quantitative in nature it is not qualitative in nature and something which is quantitative in nature tends to have a human interference and i'm not against that i said earlier also that valuation is an art if i am asked to to show two people standing against each other then i would have my painting nine people have their own painting god will decide who is right who is wrong similarly continuous monitoring activity by three valuation experts would end up having three different meaning but remember continuous monitoring activity is not a complete art valuation is a complete art but continuous monitoring activity is science also because you are bound down the logics of accounting bound down the logics of cash flow direct method indirect method cash flow from operation cash flow from financing cash flow from so and so i'm not entering into full debate pnl what is top line what is adjusted top line what is bottom line what is uh, you know uh, the the middle line the balance sheet what is the current portion of the debt what is not the current portion of the debt and so on and so forth and here comes the beauty of the game and that beauty of the game is that when we are raising our money in the form of any facility letter without entering into the merits of the discussion that this facility letter is uh in dollar terms euro gbp swiss franc new zealand dollar australian dollar so and so forth currency what is the interest rate collateral the very important thing is the continuous monitoring activity and also when to roll over this because generally the funds are raised for a longer period of time and when i am in a business of gestation that without quoting a specific name there are industries where in a year or so you started getting the money but there are industries where even after 10 years 15 years 20 years 25 years you are getting the money but you are waiting for the right time to come the gestation period is very very long 
henceforth, henceforth, when it comes to consortia, when it comes to the raising of money in a common pool for a common purpose, which is binding by a legal contract, and that legal contract is as per the contract act of so and so country. It is very essential for us to understand the importance of continuous monitoring activity. And it is also essential to understand that continuous monitoring activity is quantitative in nature, but there are qualitative factors also. And when I'm using a word qualitative factors, then honestly speaking, I am speechless because qualitative factors are very hard to define. In accounting, there is a thing called hard to value a set. Similarly, it is very hard that what all are the quantity are the qualitative factors when somebody see in the so and so bunch. So very importantly, it is very hard to find these kind of topics in the books, but I'm telling you that the world of investment banking is getting smarter and smarter, which deserves my appreciation, honestly speaking. And also, because it is getting smarter and smarter, it is keeping us on toes because it wants us to also get smarter and smarter. And at the same point of time, there are new products which are coming up in the world of financial market. Like, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you that I had a word with my friend who works in some country, uh, in a, in a global financial center. I can't name the way they make continuous monitoring activity, the, the format. I don't think that anybody is making that. And their format is so detailed, so detailed that they are speaking, seeking almost every possible information about the company at least five years down the line. So that again depends upon case to case basis. But having said that, having said that, for a novice, the difference between consortium and syndication is same, like it was for me in 2007. But both are different. And also, the role played by continuous monitoring activity is something it looks that it has no role to play. But in my respectful submission, continuous monitoring activity is, uh, is, is something which is playing a very key role when it comes to funding. Now, uh, please note that before I wind up that in this, though this video is around 24 odd minutes, but in this video, I not explained everything about the difference between these two, because I strongly believe that this topic deserves a lengthy discussion, but still an interesting topic for discussion. It's really a pleasure speaking with you, ladies and gentlemen. My WhatsApp number is right on the screen. You're welcome to give me a call or you can WhatsApp us, but please do remember we do not entertain frivolous WhatsApp messages. We only entertain the genuine parts of messages. Thank you and uh, have a great time.